To complete this task, you'll first need to open the file structure2.sib. Once you open this file, you need to make sure that the Ideas Hub is open. You can open it, of course, by pressing the little Ideas button on the toolbar, or you can go to Window, Ideas to turn it on. In the Ideas Hub, you're going to find uh, ideas from four different progressions. To make it easy to see which idea goes with which, they've been colour coded and given the same name. So all of the progression ideas, uh, progression three ideas, have this sort of peach colour, and they say progression three on them. If I arrow down, you can see progression one has got the blue colour, progression four has the green colour, and progression two has another kind of pinky colour. So what does that mean, different progressions? Well, it means that each one uses the same chord progression, so all the ideas in progression 2 will work together. If we made them all play back at the same time, it would work. However, if we took one of the ideas from progression 2 and put it together with one of the ideas of progression 4, it's not guaranteed to work so well. So what's been provided here is the opportunity for you to build sections through a piece of music without having to create that music first yourself. Your task is to create an interesting structure which keeps the um, listener wondering what's going to happen next. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll start putting some music in. I'm going to click on a couple of the chord patterns from each section to choose one. So let, for instance, here's the chord pattern in progression one. That's pretty simple. Clicking and holding plays it back. When I let go, it stops playing. Let's listen to the one from progression four. And that one's a little bit more interesting. Actually, I think I'd rather start my piece with progression four rather than progression one. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to move into my score, and I can see that the only instrument that's been provided for me is a marimba. Well, luckily that was a fairly marimba sounding kind of instrument. So I'm just simply going to click on the first bar there in the marimba, and then I'm going to click the Paste Ideas button, first checking that I've got that idea highlighted so that I know it will be pasted in. I do that, and there we go, it's now in the marimba part. All right, I want to find something that will go well with that marimba part, so I'm going to click and hold on another idea. Well, it's just a fairly simple bass line. I'll add that in as well. Now you can see that I don't actually have a bass instrument here in my score. It's down to you to add the instruments you want to use, and you don't even have to add the same instruments as the ones that you can see there. So for instance, if I press I for instruments to open up Sibelius's instruments menu, there we go, I could add something that isn't a bass guitar at all. For instance, I could add a tuba, which could perhaps play music in that nice low range. And if I double click on the tuba, if you can't see the brass instruments, of course, you click on brass under family first. If you wanted to add a bass guitar, I would have clicked on guitars under family first. And then just double click on the instrument you need and it will be added into the staves in score list. When you click OK, you go back to your score and the new instrument is there. So now I'm going to click on the first bar in that tuba part and I'm going to click again the paste idea button to paste the idea into there. Now I can have a listen to what that sounds like with a tuba playing along with the marimba. Hmm, chocolatey. Now I could carry on adding more parts. For instance, there's a simple um, swing drum part here. And if I arrow up a little bit, you can see there's some stabs here on brass instruments. Oh, that's actually a saxophone sound. So I think that I'll do that. I'm going to add those in. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to add all of the instruments in this progression necessarily at all, but I certainly don't want to add them all straight away in the first bar. The section isn't just going to go for four bars. I might want it to go for, say, 16 or 32 bars. So I'm probably going to be repeating this bass line and this chord progression and adding other layers as we go to create interest and a sense of build. So to repeat these bars in Sibelius, it's as simple as clicking on the first um, bar in the first instrument, then holding down the shift key and clicking in the last bar of the bottom instrument. Now once you've got that music highlighted, to repeat it, you simply type R, R for repeat. There we go, I've now got eight bars, and in fact I'm going to press it another two times, and now I've got 16 bars of that particular chord pattern, just repeated over and over again. Now I think that what I might do is get these, this saxophone line, 
But I might get that to be played in trombones, just again to choose some slightly different instruments. So I'm going to press I for instruments. I'm going to go to brass family and I'm going to double click trombones and maybe I'll also find something that works with trumpets. Just make quite a brassy piece like James Morrison's. Click OK and what I'm going to do now is find where bar 9 comes because I don't want to introduce all my stuff at the start. So there's bar 6, 7, 8, 9. So now I'll highlight the trombones and even though that was originally written for saxes I'm going to paste it into the trombones and you'll see it comes in in the right clef. By the way when you get to the end of the page sometimes it can be a bit complicated trying to follow exactly where the music's going. So if you click this button here on the toolbar, it's called the panorama button, it turns your score into one big long score. So you don't need to worry about page turns anymore. And last but not least, I'm going to add these other chord stabs. You can see that they're much higher. They'd probably be useful for trumpets. So I'm going to highlight that and then click and paste. Of course, I could click and hold on that idea first to audition it. Now let's have a listen to where we're going. Maybe if I just go back to the start of bar five and press play, I'll be able to have a listen to how we move from one part of this section to the next. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Probably the next thing I want to do is repeat that again and press highlight those bars and press R to repeat that. Uh, and maybe I could add another layer on, maybe that would sound good with the drum part. Now once you feel like you've built one section, you need to consider which progression would come next. So again, come back to the Ideas Hub and audition these other sections. Decide what order you think they're going to work in best. You don't have to use all of the progressions, but you might want to consider coming back to the material that you started with at some point to create a sense of returning and um, closure to your overall structure. The task here, since you're not actually having to write any of the individual musical elements, is really to think about how the piece can get a good sense of progression and feel like it was carefully put together. So spend a bit of time planning that before you finish. <laughs>